Hi, everybody. I'm Dave. I am a classically trained stage actor who now spends most of my professional time doing voiceover work from home. More than a year ago, I did a video comparing this microphone, the Rode NTG2 shotgun microphone, to three other different kinds of microphones, a dynamic, a condenser, and a lapel microphone to see how they performed in an untreated room, uh, namely this room, my living room, where I don't have any padding or foam on the walls. It's just a perfect natural uh, environment. One of the comments that I got on that video, they asked, how would a more expensive shotgun microphone like the Sennheiser MKH416 compare to a less expensive microphone like the Rode NTG2? I'd never thought to compare the two before, so why don't we find out? So let's start with the question, why would you use a shotgun microphone to record voiceover instead of a large diaphragm condenser microphone? Well, the answer to that question is this microphone right here, the Sennheiser MKH416. Since its release in the 1970s, the Sennheiser MKH416 quickly became the gold standard for use on Hollywood film sets to capture dialogue. The Sennheiser MKH416 has become a widely industry standard used voiceover microphone, particularly in Los Angeles for that reason. Uh, it, it's not the most natural or neutral sounding microphone, but for better or for worse, for all reasons that I'm not gonna get into here, it has become the sound that most audiences associate with film dialogue and has been for the past 40 or 50 years. The Sennheiser retails for $999. It really enhances the low mids of most men's voices, and so I use it when I need to do like a car commercial or uh, uh, an industrial sort of blue collar video. Anytime I need to have that sort of extra manly man edge. It makes my voice sound a little more masculine than it normally does, and so I think it's really flattering on my voice. Now, the Rode NTG2 was released in the late 2000s. It sells for $270, nearly a third of what the Sennheiser costs. Anytime I work with a local videography company, someone who might do videography for corporations, or they produce local commercials, or even ad agencies who do their film production in-house, Nine times out of 10, I see the Rode NTG2 on the set. It has a very clean and neutral sound. Now, you should be able to hear some of the differences between these two microphones as I'm speaking into them. The Rode tends to accentuate some of the more high frequencies, and as a result, even though they are almost the exact same distance away from my mouth, the Rode sounds a little thinner, a little airier, and even a little more distant uh, than the Sennheiser does. The Rode is far less sensitive than the Sennheiser, so I need to turn the gain up on my audio recording device two or three clicks more in order to get an equivalent sound level as the Sennheiser. Now, by contrast, the Sennheiser, because it's capturing a lot more of those low mids, I feel like my voice is a little clearer and sounds more present uh, and a little more close mic compared to the Rode, even though they're the same distance away. Now, they're both doing about the same job of rejecting the room reflections here, my voice bouncing against the hardwood floors and the coffee table. I've also got my HVAC running, and they're both doing about the same job rejecting it, but because the road tends to accentuate more higher frequencies than the Sennheiser does, I feel like the sound of the HVAC is a little more present in the recording with the road than it is with the Sennheiser. So that's what they sound like compared to each other in just an untreated room. But at the end of the day, when you listen to a finished spot, it's not done in an untreated room. You've done your best to do it in a, in a treated space, whether that's your closet or you've put up some moving blankets, you've put up some acoustical foam. So what does that sound like? Well, I took the trouble of recording a little bit of advertising copy in my recording booth. So you can hear what the two of those sound like compared to each other right now. It's the Memorial Day sales event at Graham Auto Group. Save hundreds on new and used vehicles at any of our three locations. It's our biggest sales event of the year, and it's on now. It's the Memorial Day sales event at Graham Auto Group. Save hundreds on new and used vehicles at any of our three locations. It's our biggest sales event of the year, and it's on now. Let's listen to those again. It's the Memorial Day sales event at Graham Auto Group. Save hundreds on new and used vehicles at any of our three locations. It's our biggest sales event of the year, and it's on now. It's the Memorial Day sales event at Graham Auto Group. Save hundreds on new and used vehicles at any of our three locations. It's our biggest sales event of the year, and it's on now. 
Okay, so you're probably hearing a lot of the same differences that you can hear up here in my living room, that the Rode tends to accentuate the higher frequencies a little more, that the Sennheiser tends to accentuate the low mids to give a sort of a punchier, meatier sound. There's nothing wrong with the sound of the Rode, it sounds fine, but there's something a little extra special about the Sennheiser. But in a completed product with EQ, compression, noise gating, and a music bed underneath, can we even tell the difference? Let's find out. It's the Memorial Day sales event at Graham Auto Group. Save hundreds on new and used vehicles at any of our three locations. It's our biggest sales event of the year, and it's on now. It's the Memorial Day sales event at Graham Auto Group. Save hundreds on new and used vehicles at any of our three locations. It's our biggest sales event of the year, and it's on now. Let's listen to those one more time. It's the Memorial Day sales event at Graham Auto Group. Save hundreds on new and used vehicles at any of our three locations. It's our biggest sales event of the year, and it's on now. It's the Memorial Day sales event at Graham Auto Group. Save hundreds on new and used vehicles at any of our three locations. It's our biggest sales event of the year, and it's on now. So if you're listening on really good headphones, you'll probably notice that you still hear more of that punch from the Sennheiser. It manages to help my voice cut through the music bed a little clearer. It's that low mid-range uh, uh, frequency. You can hear it not only in the vowels, but also in the consonants. Helps make everything clearer, helps my voice stand out against the music bed. The road still sounds really, really good. It just doesn't add that extra bit of magic that the Sennheiser imbues my voice with. Does the road sound bad? No, not at all. It's got a very clean, crisp, professional sound. I think it sounds really good on the spot. But is it worth spending nearly three times as much to get that extra bit of magic that the Sennheiser could give you? Only you can decide that. Now, if you're an actor like me, it's possible that video production is already a part of your professional repertoire. So you might find that you already have access to one of these microphones. And I think either one is a perfectly acceptable choice for recording a professional broadcast quality voiceover. That said, if you were looking to spend about $300 on your very first voiceover microphone, the Rode NTG2 isn't what I would buy. If you happen to have one lying around anyway, absolutely put it to use. It's gonna make a great recording. But if you're looking to buy a microphone specifically for voiceover, most people are better served with a large diaphragm condenser. This is the Rode NT1. It's about the same price as the Rode NTG2, and this is what people usually use for voiceover. Now, this performs much better in a treated room like a booth or your closet or somewhere where you've got moving blankets or, or acoustical foam or acoustical panels or whatever. A large diaphragm condenser, of course, is going to pick up a lot more room sound. Those little ambient reflections or echoes that bounce off the hard surfaces in your room than a shotgun microphone is going to. If you already do videography and you already have one of these lying around, use it. Cut voiceover with it. It cuts a great spot. But if you think you're at the point in your career where you might want to invest in a microphone that adds a little bit of extra magic to your voice instead of just recording something completely neutral and balanced, you might think about investing in something like the Sennheiser MKH416. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you really got a chance to listen closely to the differences between these two microphones and see if one of them might be right for you. If you like this video, do me a favor, you can hit that like button or even the subscribe button if you want. I don't do these videos a lot because uh, my voiceover work keeps me very busy, but I'm excited to make more of them in the future, so keep your eyes out. Thanks again for watching. Bye-bye.